This magnificent building is Rome's shining glory, and it's even better in person than you can imagine. Built between 72 to 80 AD, it is the largest amphitheater in the world and could hold up to 80,000 people. Local Romans used to come to see violent gladiator battles or animal hunts, but now it's a lot more peaceful. Founded by Pope Julius II in the 16th century, the Vatican Museums house one of the largest and most important art collections in the world, and is set across 54 galleries, courtyards, and hallways. You'll find thousands of ancient sculptures, works by Raphael, and of course, Michelangelo's frescoes in the Sistine Chapel. The epicenter of Roman Catholicism, St. Peter's Basilica is centered in Vatican City and is renowned for its stunning architecture. What's more, it's open daily for free. Many visitors enjoy trekking to the top of the dome. For a fee of 8 euros, you can climb the 551 steps to the summit. For a fee of 10 euros, you can take an elevator to a terrace where you'll climb just 320. Regardless, you'll take in a panorama of Rome's spectacular landscape. The Roman Forum comprises much of the ancient Rome's most important structures, from shrines to government houses to monuments. Although much of the complex is in ruins, you can see the remains and imagine the former glory of the Arch of Septimius Severus, the Temple of Saturn, the Arch of Titus and the House of the Vestal Virgins, among other structures. A must-see on many travelers' itineraries, the Trevi Fountain is situated amongst a high concentration of hotels, shopping and nightlife in the Trevi district. Finished in the mid-1700s, the Trevi is a powerful example of a Baroque design with a distinctly mythological character. The god of the sea, Oceanus, emerges from the pool, flanked by his trusty tritons. The Pantheon, a former Roman temple and now a present-day church, is known for its perfect proportions, which is amazing, seeing as it was raised in AD 120. While you're there, you can also pay your respects to Raphael, as well as Italian kings Victor Emmanuel II and Umberto, Umberto I, who are all buried there. The centuries-old Piazza Navona is perhaps one of the best-known public squares in Rome. People sipping coffees while watching street performers and artists fill the square. Cafes abound, and there are a number of shops, too. You'll also find a number of impressive monuments, including the Fountain of the Four Rivers and St. Agnes in Agon. Found at the Piazza di Spagna, the Spanish steps are another must-do for many travelers. Here, visitors can tread the same stairs, that writers and artists have climbed for centuries. The steps are especially alluring in spring, when they're flanked by blooming azaleas. Piazza del Popolo is yet another Roman square, where you can take in phenomenal architecture and magnificent sculpture. The square dates back to the mid-1500s and is the historic center of Rome. In fact, Three major roads intersect here, Via di Ripetta, Via del Corso, and Via del Babuno. The Castel Sant'Angelo has had many purposes over its lifetime. Originally built as a mausoleum for Roman Emperor Hadrian, the castle has also been a place of protection for popes during invasions, papal residences, military barracks, and a prison. Today, it's a museum show showcasing not only the site's military history, but also incredible frescoes.
The Galleria Borghese is half villa, half museum, and it has some resplendent gardens, too. Originally commissioned by Cardinal Scipione Borghese in the 17th century to shelter his massive art collection, it's now considered one of the premier art galleries in the city. The Capitoline Museums dates back to the 1400s, and it holds Rome's symbol, the bronze Capitoline she-wolf. According to lore, the wolf nursed the half-wolf, half-god founders of the city, twins Romulus and Remus. Its namesake museum contains busts of Roman emperors, statues, and paintings by Caravaggio and Battista, among others. If you want to look at the real Rome, experts and travelers strongly recommend you visit Trastevere. Located southeast of Vatican City, this neighborhood is home to the Basilica of Santa Maria in Trastevere, as well as numerous restaurants and neighborhood shops. The Baths of Caracalla were a massive public bathing complex built in the 3rd century. Throughout the year, the site is open during the day for visitors to stroll through ruins that were so magnificent they inspired the main concourse at Grand Central Terminal. Each summer, the City of Rome's Opera Company, Company performs at the Baths, using the towering brick ruins as a backdrop. The ancient Appian Way has a history that dates back to 312 BC and includes the site of Spartacus' execution, the tomb of Cecilia Metella, and many a Roman military march. These days, it stretches for 38.5 miles, though several monuments and historic, historic sites are centered around an approximately two-mile stretch along Parco dell'Appia Antica. The park sits roughly two miles south of the Colosseum, Rome is full of aristocratic palaces whose splendors are hidden behind closed doors. One such place is the Palazzo Doria Pamphilge right on the bustling Via del Corso. Enter and you'll find yourself in a quiet courtyard that feels a world away from the crowds. Up upstairs, spend some time marveling at the Hall of Mirrors, which looks like a smaller version of the one at Versailles, with gold-framed Venetian mirrors, antique statues and chandeliers. Basilica of St. Clement was transformed over the centuries from a private home that was the site of clandestine Christian worship in the first century to a grand public basilica by the sixth century, reflecting the emerging Catholic Church's growing legitimacy and power. The archaeological traces of the Basilica Silica's history were discovered in the 1860s by Joseph Mullaoli. Santa Maria della Vittoria is a Catholic titular church and basilica dedicated to the Virgin Mary in Rome. The church is known for the masterpiece by John Lorenzo Bernini in the Cornero Chapel, The Ecstasy of Saint Teresa. You'll want to visit the San Luigi dei Francisci, if you're a fan of Caravaggio. Inside this church near Piazza Navona, are three of the Baroque artists' works, including the Calling of St. Matthew, St. Matthew and the Angel, and the Martyrdom of St. Matthew. According to historians, the Campo de Fiori looks much the same, as it did in the early 1800s, except for the numerous pizzerias, cafes and galaterias that line the periphery. The Campo de Fiori is worth visiting twice in a trip, once during the day for its, bus its bustling market, and again as the sun sets for its convivial nightlife. Located above the Trastevere neighborhood, Gianicolo, or Giniculum Hill, isn't technically one of the fabled hills, but it is worth the trek, 
because it's the highest point in Rome and offers an expansive vista over the Eternal City. The elegant Fontana dell'Acqua Paola, a fountain featured in the, featured in the opening scene of La Grande Bellezza, is located just nearby, and its majesty will surely take your breath away.